Hello brothers and sisters, God bless, hope your another day is going good. Throughout this video I'll be addressing the point that where people say you can't just believe and live any way you want to. And when you break down the statement, what they're saying is you can't simply live by faith. There's something else, some other way that you must live independent from faith. And that's how you'll ultimately be saved. Because when they say the word can't, that language is saying this is what you can't do that this is forbidden, that you live by faith alone, but there's something else, some other way that you also must live. That's what happens when people say that you can't just simply believe and live any way you want to. They're suggesting that you have to live some other way than faith, and the Bible says we live by faith. So when you break down the statement, it's really an attack on the gospel and faith alone in Christ because that's how we live, the just shall live by faith. And when they say you can't just simply believe, they're saying you can't just simply have faith and live any way you want. They're suggesting there's some other way that you must live independent from faith. Because living by faith alone is forbidden. That's why they're using the word can't. You can't just simply believe and live any way you want. So I hope you enjoy this video coming up. I'm going to put a very shocking quote from Martin Luther that most may not be familiar with. Also, towards the end, I'm going to play an audio clip from the Bible where it talks about Solomon in the last years of his life where he was caught up in idolatry, uh, serving other gods as far as sacrificing to them and burning incense. And so I asked the question, do you believe that Solomon will go to hell after judgment or do you believe he's with the Lord now in heaven? And what do you ultimately believe about that? So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. God bless. Here's an interesting quote. If you're familiar with Martin Luther, if you know your history, if you call yourself a Protestant or evangelical, and you hold to a faith alone gospel, the gospel was reignited by Martin Luther when he left the Catholic Church and he got with a group of people and they made a printing press and started handing out Bibles to people and he taught faith alone gospel and was rejecting the Catholic Church and their false teachings and their false gospel because he could see from the scriptures that they were teaching things contrary to the word of God. So this is a quote that Martin Luther gave and I think you're going to find it interesting because it disagrees with the mentality and mindset of most people that call themselves Protestants today who say, well, you can't just simply believe and live any way you want to. So this was cited in Hendricks, and I'm going to go ahead and read this. Um, if you are a preacher of grace, then preach a true grace and not a fictitious grace. If grace is true, you must bear a true and not a fictitious sin. God does not save people who are only fictitious sinners. Be a sinner and sin boldly, but believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly. For he is victorious over sin, death, and the world. As long as we are in this world, we have to sin. This life is not a dwelling place of righteousness, but as Peter says, we look forward to a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 13. It is enough that by the riches of God's glory, we have come to know the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world, John chapter 1, verse 29. No sin will separate us from the Lamb of God, even though we commit fornication and murder a thousand times a day. Now this must be someone who believes they have absolutely zero relationship to the law when it comes to being made right or righteous or reconciled or having peace with God. See, when people say you can't just believe and live any way you want to, they're suggesting that you have some relationship to the law by which you are made right, some Something else besides Christ by which you are made right with God. But Paul said, may I be found in him having a righteousness not of my own which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. That we have a righteousness not of our own, it's not through the law, which means it's not through our performance, it's not through our obedience. We have a righteousness on the basis of faith. In a lot of ways I think Martin Luther gave this statement because of what you hear constantly today where people say we can't just believe and live any way you want to so he came out with this shocking statement to show 
ultimately the maximum power of God's blood and what it can wash away. Though we would sin even a billion times more than we have even in our current life, the blood of Christ would wash away that sin as well. The nature of the blood, too, is that it washes away all our sins, past, present, and future. By one offering, he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. By one offering, the shedding of blood, and the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. By that one offering, the shedding of blood, he forgave all of our sins, past, present, and future. That no matter how much we sin, even if we sin a billion more times than what we're sinning now, it's not more powerful than the blood of the Lamb and its cleansing power. Colossians chapter 1 verse 22, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So the cleansing power of Christ is that, and his blood is that it washed away all of our sins, past, present, and future by one offering he's perfected us forever, having made us holy in his sight without blemish, free from accusation. Consider Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10, by his will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. So through the cleansing power of Jesus Christ's blood, we have a once and for all washing away of sins and made holy in God's sight without blemish, free from accusation and perfect. So when someone says, well, what if I, you know, sin a thousand times a day by committing fornication or murder? Well, is your rightness with God dependent upon law? Is, is your justification dependent upon law? According to the Bible, we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law, that a man has a not guilty verdict by their faith apart from the works of the law. So the reason why a lot of people say you can't just believe and live any way you want is because in their minds, they don't think faith in Christ has really accomplished a perfect righteousness that's not of their own through the law, but that there is some dependency upon the way they live independent from faith that makes them right with God. See, the Bible says that we live by faith, that we live by faith in the Son of God. So when someone says you can't just believe and then live any way you want to, they're saying you can't just live by faith. You have to add something else to faith because faith is not enough to save you. That's what they're implying when they say you can't just believe and then live any way you want to. Behind the statement is you can't just believe or have faith alone in Christ. There's some dependency upon the way you le live in terms of obedience or performance or works or whatever it may be, independent from faith, that's going to be the reason why you're ultimately saved. Faith alone isn't going to cut it. That's what they're suggesting when they say you can't just believe and then live any way you want to. According to the Bible, it's faith is the way that we live. It's believing is the way that we live. The just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And we live by faith according to the Bible. So when someone says you can't just believe and live any way you want to, they're suggesting that there's some other way besides faith that you live. But the Bible says that we live by faith. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And as we've seen from those passages we went over, when he gave himself up for us, he made us holy in his sight, without blemish, free from accusation, made us perfect in God's sight, having given us a once and for all holiness. So we live by faith in the Son of God and what he accomplished for us. Walking and living by faith and not by sight, because we don't look to ourselves to see if we're holy or righteous, because it we're not going to see it. You're not going to see it in the flesh. The flesh profits nothing, Jesus said. It's the Spirit that gives life, and we're united with the Lord in the Spirit. He that's joined to the Lord is one Spirit with him, where he has become, according to the Bible, by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, and wisdom, so that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. So that's how we live, by faith in the Son of God who accomplished a perfect life for us, a perfect life of obedience, which has been given to us. And that's how we're made righteous, just through as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Even so, through the one man's obedience, the many are made righteous. So it's through the one man's obedience that the many are made righteous collectively and equally, 
even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all those who believe, and there is no difference. So that's how we live by faith in the Son of God. That's how we live every day, knowing that he is the reason why we're made right and righteous before God. And it's not through our keeping of the law, not yesterday, not today, or not tomorrow either. Paul said, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came to the law, then Christ died needlessly. I do not nullify the grace of God, that is to make it to no effect, to void it out. For if my rightness with God came to the law, then Christ died needlessly. So our rightness with God comes through Christ and when he died for us. Because when he died for us, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish, free from accusation. He made us perfect in God's sight, giving us a once and for all holiness. And that's how we live, by faith in the Son of God and not ourselves. So when someone says you can't simply believe and live any way you want to, what they're saying is that don't believe that having faith alone and Christ alone is going to save you. There's going to have to be some measure of something else in terms of works or performance, human effort, that will save you. It's all implicit in what they're saying. That's why in the language of the statement when they say you can't simply believe, and live any way you want to they're saying you can't just have faith alone and live that way but there's some other way you have to live independent from faith and that's how you'll really be saved it's implicit in what they're saying I hope you're getting the point now this is an interesting thing to think about is if you believe that Solomon went to heaven or not King Solomon of the Bible who wrote three different books Ecclesiastics Proverbs and the Song of Solomon you know, how many legalists, pro, you know, quote out of Proverbs. Now, do they believe that Solomon is in heaven? Do you believe that Solomon is going to be in heaven with God? Because when the scripture talks about the latter part of his life, he was sacrificing to foreign gods. He had, his heart had turned away from the Lord, burning incense to other gods because he had all these foreign wives who worshipped all these pagan deities. And then um, his heart was turned away from the Lord. And he died in that sin of idolatry and uh, worshiping other gods. So ask yourself as a believer in the Bible, do you read these words of um, Ecclesiastic Proverbs and the Song of Solomon thinking to yourself, well, this prophet will ultimately be in hell for an unrepentant life. You know, He didn't repent of his sins. So is he going to be in hell for all eternity? Or is salvation a one-time event when we put our faith in Christ, whether... You know, people are looking forward to the sacrifice like the prophets of the Old Testament did, or we're looking back to the sacrifice. Is it a one-time event where you place your faith in Christ and he saves you and keeps you in his hand? And the Bible says, if we believe not, yet he abides faithful, for he cannot deny himself. That even when we believe not or we're faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So when you think about Solomon, he certainly uh, sinned boldly. You know, if you think about that Martin Luther uh, quote, he said, don't bear a fictitious sin, sin boldly. Well, he certainly did. Um, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. But nonetheless, that's the recording we have of Solomon in the Bible at the last part of his life right before he died. So I'm going to go ahead and play that clip so you can hear about the state of Solomon in the latter part of his life right before he died. And after the clip's done, I'll just go ahead and end the video. So. Um, so think about it. Do you think Solomon is in hell according to what you believe in the scripture? Or was it dependent upon Solomon to some measure or degree for him to love God with all of his heart, with all of his mind, and with all of his soul? Which is one of the commandments, which no one will ultimately be justified. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for only by the law comes the knowledge of sin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, play the clip, guys. God bless. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods.
and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Melcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, Forasmuch as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake which I have chosen. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not for ever. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. And the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead.